How do you buy a domain name that is already owned by somebody else? Hey, Chris Zyke with Media Ops. We help companies to acquire the raw, unfiltered version of the brand name. That's the exact match. Domain name and broker some of the best domains on the planet. So check it out at MediaOptions.com. Check out ChrisZyker.com and do a daily podcast. And my my video for today is this. What do you like? What do you do and how do you buy a domain name that's already taken, uh, that's already owned by somebody else? Uh, it was interesting the other day. I had a, a discussion with uh, with someone. We're talking about domain names, and like, okay, I'm just gonna go and register a domain name. But the reality is this: most of the great domain, actually, all of the great domains are taken. They're gone. Like, you don't have a chance. You don't have a chance. Somebody else owns them, and so by default, if you're a new company, if you're a new brand, unless you're gonna make up some domain name, uh, make up, I'm saying, make up a brand that's just not even a word yet. Okay. You're going to need to buy it from somebody else. That's just like default. Like it's going to happen uh, if you're serious and if your branding is serious. So uh, how do you buy it? What do you do? What do you do? Well, the first thing is you have to understand. I'm going to go through some fundamentals here, okay? Uh, I'm not going to talk about the mechanics of actually buying it, using an escrow service, uh, transferring it. You can look those up online. But I want to get the like the fundamentals and the foundation to uh, like um, how this process works. The first step we, we do and we do, because we actually acquire a lot of domain names for people, but 40% of our business is done in domain acquisitions. And the first step is like, who owns that domain? Like, okay, I know that's the obvious question. Who owns it? Because that's what you're asking. But like, what's the type of owner? Okay, so there's 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 three main types of owners that, that we have identified. The first one is it's owned by a business or it's owned by a corporation. A typical what happens is that that business or corporation, if they're not using the domain name, I'm going to assume they're not using the, the domain name because it's an option for you. If it's already a brand, then, uh, hey, good luck. Like, they're not going to sell it. And if they do sell it, it's going to have brand equity. And that brand equity is going to mean it's going to be millions and millions of dollars. Or at least it's going to be multiples over what you would what you would pay for that domain name uh, unless you're looking at the true long-term value for your brand. So, by default, listen, if it's taken, if it's already in use, that I'm going to take that off. But if it's not in use, what happens usually is that they may have bought that domain and for a brand that never maybe materialized, or maybe they they retired a different brand, or maybe it was through like several acquisitions and several mergers where they no longer are using that domain. Uh, and that's typical of what we see. We see we have, there's several, uh, most of the big companies have just like a treasure chest of absolutely amazing domain names. Okay, so the first one is the business type owner. The second type of owner is the investor. Listen, they're buying that domain name and they're looking to, they're buying it as an investment to resell that domain name. Once again, a lot of the great domain names, they're taken by investors who have, uh, who've put good money down themselves uh, to buy that domain name. And the third type of owner is the personal owner and they've had this domain name. They may have owned it for 15 years, maybe 10 years. Uh, they may have had a project in mind when they bought it. Maybe they're using it for their email address. Maybe they're just the lucky people who were the first ones to register that domain name. And yes, that does happen. <laughs> it happens over and over and over again. I guess those are two, three different types of owners. Now, why is that important to know the three different types of owners? It's important to know the three, the three different types of owners because you have to talk to each of these types of owners differently. Each of them has different risks different rewards. Okay, if you talk to some of the big companies and you're saying, um, you know, they have a domain name and you're offering them $50,000, they may say, well, like, okay, that's great, but like that doesn't even move the needle, right? Because we have like billions of dollars in the bank. <laughs> so it's not money for them, really what it's risk mitigation, risk mitigation for them. How do they reduce the risk that they have to their strategy? Uh, there's been times where we've bought domain names and... After it's sold, it transferred. We've gotten calls like late at night from the company saying, hey, we've got a major issue. Like we thought this domain name was just kind of sitting there, but like literally there's like lots of backlinks that like everything is crashing now. We need it back. Uh, in this case, what happened is that, I mean, the other company bought it for a reason. They bought it for a brand. And so um, they were compensated for that buyback. But listen, there's risk mitigation. Like a lot of companies don't want to sell it because they don't want their competition to get it. Uh, and then build a brand on that and then go after them. I mean, imagine going to your board of directors, imagine going to your leadership team saying, yeah, you know, we own that brand, but now it looks like somebody else launched on it. So risk is is the most important part for them. Now, if you look at the domain investor, listen, they're about a return on investment. Are they going to make their money back for their investment? 
you know, they may have held that money and they may have had that money being held for maybe five years, maybe 10 years. I don't know. I don't know how long they've owned the domain name for, but uh, there's a certain cost of capital involved in that situation. And will they get the, re- uh, will they get the return on in- investment back? So uh, if they think that they can, and you're a big company and you're approaching them, and they think they can get twice the amount for their domain name, listen, guess what? They're going to raise that amount maybe two to three times. Okay, this sell voice.com is a great example. Although there's a business uh, that was kind of an investment also, and they just held out for $30 million. Uh, the most extreme case, the most extreme case of selling a domain name, okay? And then the personal type of owner, uh, they also have risks. Like, listen, a lot of times there's a personal attachment. They've owned this domain name. It's their identity. They've gone to cocktail parties, right? They've gone to parties saying, hey, I own this domain name. And everyone's like, whoa, you got to be kidding me. That's an amazing domain name. Like, how did you get that? And they tell the story. And they say, hey, email me at this domain name.com. And, and there's this massive personal attachment that they have to it that sometimes you almost have to pry it out of their hands. And so although there's the mechanics of buying a domain name, if you don't understand the type of owner and you don't understand how to negotiate and talk to this type of owner, most of the time what happens is that a deal does not get done. You don't get it across the finish line because you approach them the wrong way. Or if you do get it, you do get it across the finish line. Maybe you pay two to four times more for that domain name. Two great examples uh, that recent examples. One was Carrot.com. He ended up paying six hundred thousand dollars for the, the the domain name. First of all, I think the guy is awesome. Check him out, support him, give him a backlink. Carrot.com. <laughs> love his product. Love his spirit. I haven't talked to the guy, but uh, I think he, I think it's just a great story. And But if you look at the raw value, okay, I break out domain names in three different buckets. There's raw equity, brand equity, and perceived equity, kind of market trends, potential equity. The, 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 the raw equity, equity for that domain name was maybe one fifty to two fifty, okay, maybe one to $200,000. And so he paid uh, a multiple over that. Now, I have no idea if there's a bidding war involved there. I know he had tried to get it three different times. You can go back in this channel, and I have a video on his story from what I read the the point is that he um, he overpaid for the domain. And one of the comments he made is, I wish I would have brought a broker in at the very beginning because it would have avoided this. Okay, listen, he didn't understand at that time the type of owner, how to negotiate, and how to get it across the finish line in the most effic- efficient and effective method possible. For him, uh, sometimes that is not necessarily about money. Sometimes that's just about getting the job done. Sometimes it is about money and saving money. But in the end, he ended up overpaying. And but he got the domain name, which is a great story and a whole nother topic in and of itself on global positioning, leadership positioning, branding, and marketing, and how domain names impact all those. Another example on the opposite side is Close.com. Close.com, another cool company. I use uh, I use the software actually to sign someone up yesterday. I probably should have got an affiliate link for it. Uh, I think they're awesome. It's super simple CRM. Uh, but one of the things he said is they were negotiating with the, with the owner for years, for years. And they knew, they knew at some point they had him by the uh, the jugular because uh, he kind of reached back out to them saying, hey, are you still interested in this domain name? And so uh, they were able to negotiate and get like phenomenal terms on their side. But what that says is that, uh, you know, this is the opposite side of the spectrum here, is that the owner ended up losing, I think, lost out, lost the potential. Potentially, I don't know the, the whole intricacies of the deal. Seemed like he would have been happy. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done the deal. But had he gone to a broker, he would have had uh, like media options. He would have had a much more exposure. And with that exposure comes uh, comes a deal getting done at higher levels um, and at a higher, yeah, at more money. Okay. So in that case, he like... Uh, uh, the buyer, I think, did a great job, but the seller should have used a domain broker. But it's important to understand the types of owners and how to negotiate. Now, from there in my process, I have a five-step approach to domain acquisitions. You go to domain valuations, not for today, not for today, but that's the next thing that happens is that most companies, they want to spend $5,000 for a $100,000, $200,000, million-dollar domain name. And it's like, listen, you just wasted like months and months, months and months of talking, internal strategies, and you never had a shot at owning that domain name because your budget was like a tenth of what the value that domain name is worth. And maybe it, it's uh, it's even, you know, maybe they have offers that are, you know, maybe 10x, you know, 20x what you're even thinking you can you budget it for today. So you need to understand the valuation. Anyways, listen, I hope you found that was valuable today. The types of owners is something that I go over on every acquisition that I talk to. 
and talk with people, uh, uh, even um, actually on both sides of the equation is the type of owner. What do you want from it? What's the biggest risk? Understanding that when, you, when you're selling uh, or buying a domain name, it's part of the, uh, it's the second step in the five steps to domain acquisitions with media options. And uh, if you haven't already done it, go on over to chrisliker.com. In the footer section, there's a book. You can see it in the show notes here, dot com strategies, where I lay out my the strategies that I learned when I first started in, into the domain business. Also, you, you can go on over to mediaoptions.com. It's in the resource tab. And I do a daily podcast at chrisliker.com forward slash podcast. Lastly, listen, I have a three part video series uh, at chrisliker.com forward slash domains. Check that out. Three cool videos. One of them is on leasing a domain name. One of them is on what do you do when the dot com is taken and, and like how do you brand. And the third one is how do you use domain metrics to find a brand that's going to make your business go viral? I mean, domain metrics are really the heart of branding and figuring out like, okay, is this a good brand? If you're struggling between two or three different domain names and different branding options, check it out. I think you're going to like it. And uh, lastly, share this video up. I do appreciate everyone who, uh, who shares the videos and gets, just gets the, the messaging out there for domain names.